From AM 1680, The Answer, this is Business Leaders with Lance Cardoza, the behind-the-scenes story of the business shakers and movers in the Valley and beyond. And now, here's your host, Lance Cardoza. Hello, everybody. I'm excited to be here at 1680 and excited to have my first guest in the premiere show of Business Leaders. Uh, first, I want to give you a little little overview of Lance Cardoza and, and what I've been doing. BusinessStreetOnline.com, been doing that more than uh, 15 years now. We started on September 11th, 2001 with BusinessStreetOnline.com, and we've celebrated the business wins of local business people throughout the Valley, having events like the 40 Under 40, Heroes in Healthcare, the Influential Women 100, Entrepreneur 100, and other business events celebrating wins of business leaders so it was very fitting every tuesday morning at 9 a.m i join you right here on 1680 a.m the answer and bring you the answers to our valley business leaders and beyond and my guest this week and i'm so excited to have a good friend of mine and been working with uh, the fresno grizzlies the general manager manager of the fresno grizzlies Derek franks Derek, thank you for being on the premiere show thank you lance for having me i'm, I'm excited to be here it's fun stuff and we're, we're going to talk about when we talk to our business leaders every week we're gonna we're gonna hear the inside story we're gonna know where did Derek frank start we're gonna know uh what do you do today and what uh, inspires you to move forward every day as a business leader in our san joaquin valley and at the same time too how do we uh how do we share some tips and tricks that helps you in your day to get through your day but give us a little overview who is Derek franks right on yeah thanks again lance excited for your show and uh, uh thrilled to be your first guest the uh so Derek Franks, I, I, uh, I'm a very lucky guy. I, I have been uh, working for the Fresno Grizzlies since 2004. And uh, for those who don't know me, I grew up in Kingsburg, California, just you know, not many miles down the road here from, from Chichancy Park. Uh, when I started working there, it took me 20 minutes from my, my house in Kingsburg to get to the ballpark. So, uh, and, and before that, you were from Avenel, correct? Yeah, I was born in Avenel. My, my, uh, my, my dad grew up there, and uh, I was initially born in Avenel. My folks... Um, owned a liquor store called the Beverage Hut, and the first place that I ever lived was an apartment on the backside of the Beverage Hut in Avenel, California. My grandmother still lives there today, and uh, and then you know I started school and grew up in Kingsburg. So we we uh, my parents lived in Fresno for a short time, and then uh, started school in Kingsburg, and and then uh, moved to Fresno in 2004 when I got the opportunity to work for the Fresno Grizzlies good always a baseball fan or was it something you followed as a kid yeah yeah you know um i mentioned my dad my dad and i our thing was baseball and and one of the things you know i'll, I'll admit it here and, and of course i worked for uh, the grizzlies we were giants affiliate for a long time houston astros affiliate now but i grew up a la dodgers fan and that you know gives people some heartburn sometimes that some <laughs> of the giants uh faithful here that that uh hang out at chancy park but um <laughs> you know i grew up listening to Vin Scully on the radio with my dad. And one of the things I think is really, really great, and that one of my favorite things about baseball, it's the greatest game at, that'll ever be played, in my opinion, uh, is my dad and I both have the exact same memory of falling in love with the game of baseball 30 years apart, which is listening to Vin Scully on the radio calling Dodger games. And that's, you know, Vin Scully is my, my idol. Uh, he's, he's the man. And, uh, uh, you know, so my dad and I got both got the chance to 30 years apart, listen to Vince Scully. I mean, he went on for so long and had such a great career that, uh, you know, I listened to games on the radio with my dad and I learned how to really, uh, love baseball without really getting to see it, which is what I love so much about the game. My, my dad, uh, he's out in Reedley now. They live in Kingsburg still, but he owns Reedley insurance out there. And, uh, my dad, for those, there you that, go. he wanted that free plug. So we took care of him right there. Yeah, there you go, dad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, He's he read the he reads the newspaper man and that's one thing that when I was a kid my dad you got to read the newspaper he started me when I was a kid I mean a kid read the newspaper you know and when you're a kid you don't want to read the I don't want to read anything I don't want to read the paper right so he got me started on reading the box score so we'd listen to the game and then I check the box score the next day and I learned how to read the box score so every morning I'd look at the Dodgers score and, and uh, so I fell in love with the game uh, due to that and uh, as I as I grew up, I obviously played in high school and whatnot, and, and uh, uh, just wanted to stay around the game of baseball. So 
Got, oh. look, got looking and found the Fresno Grizzlies. Well, any of the listeners listening here at 1680, The Answer, all new show, business leaders, and I'm here with Derek Franks, the general manager of the Fresno Grizzlies, and the alter ego of the Fresno Grizzlies, the Fresno Tacos, and we'll get into that in another segment here in this hour of business leaders. And Derek, so you were born in Avenel, grew up in Kingsburg. It already sounds interesting as, as you had that love of listening to Vince Scully, and it was a radio broadcaster for those that don't know Vince Scully, and they're living under a rock somewhere. Somewhere. But uh, so you imagine how many people he inspired through the years of his professional career to fall in love with the game of baseball. And I tell people that all the time. And I have a very close involvement with the Fresno Grizzlies. And that's why I wanted to have you on the first program here with business leaders every Tuesday at 9 a.m. on 1680. But uh, you don't have to be a solid baseball fan to enjoy this minor league team, the Fresno Grizzlies. In the next segment, I want to get into that a little bit about Chichancy Park in downtown Fresno, what it means for the Valley to have this green cathedral. It's beautiful ballpark for minor league. Uh, so let's get it just a little bit into. So when you're in Kingsburg and you're following baseball and you're excited about it, and then you have an opportunity to get into baseball. And how did that start? What was the beginning of that? Yeah, I, uh, I remember sitting down with my dad and trying to figure out. I went to Reedley College. I did two years at Reedley College uh, trying to figure out what direction I wanted to go. Um, I'd got injured in a car accident, stopped playing baseball and, um, and, you know, wanted to be around the game. And I really, that was the one thing I really truly loved. And my, my dad also wanted to be a sports broadcaster when he was growing up, he called college games and he's high school PA announcer stuff. And, um, one of the big advantages we have now is there's resources and things for kids that want to get into sports. Uh, not as much when I was going to school, but it was just starting to have sports management programs and stuff like that. Fresno state didn't have one yet, but, um, but we were looking at, all right, what can we do? And I said, man, it all just comes back to baseball. I just want to be around baseball. And so my dad, my dad had a, uh, a friend who uh, named Rick Moxley. He he's in the country music business now, but he started. He was a PR guy for the Oakland A's. And I always thought, man, Rick was a cool guy. He just always he, he had tickets. He had great stories, you know. And so uh, and so we started talking about him. And I said, well, maybe I can do something like that. And so uh, I started applying to schools, and, and I ended up uh, picking Fresno State because, it, you know, I, I, the summer before I was going to leave to wherever I was going to go, I wanted to have a sports job on my resume. And the Fresno Grizzlies was an obvious one. I'd gone to games with my dad. We'd gone to, you know, Biden Field and watched games. We'd been to, Chichan you know, what is now Chichancy Park. And uh, I thought, oh, they do this job for every year. I'll just go down and be a ticket taker or an usher or whatever. Flip hot dogs. Just I don't care. Involved. Anything. Just get I just, in there. I just wanted, yeah, yeah, wherever I went, I wanted people to see a baseball team on my resume. I thought that would get me an interview. And so I just went down. You stand in a big, long line. We still do the job fair every year. It's, you know, hundreds and sometimes thousands of people line up to come and, and get a seasonal job with the team. And uh, so I went and did that. <clears throat> and I actually went in 2003, and I went to the job fair, and I, you know, went in, handed in my paper, and um, I didn't get a job the first year at this job fair. And you had taken a buddy. Crazy. You took and a buddy so, with yeah, you, right? Yeah, the interesting thing is I took a friend of mine with me, and he was uh, he just kind of went because I was going, and he got the call. He got the call, got the interview, got offered the job, and I was so upset because this was a career thing for me. I was really excited about it, and I didn't get a phone call back at all. My friend did, and he got offered a job, and I you know, swallowed my pride, and I was upset, but I, I congratulated him, and I said, hey, you know, have fun out there, man. Put in a good word for me. And he said, oh, oh man, I'm not, I'm not going to take that job. And I said, why? Why after, aren't you going to take the that? job? All this. <laughs> you know, this was my thing. He tagged along. And he said, uh, hey, I was just going to do it because you were going to do it. I figured we could carpool. And I was, man, I could have just <laughs> strangled, strangled right him there. right there. Man, I was so upset. You were so passionate about the sport. Yeah, I, wanted, about the it. I wanted it so bad. And he got it and didn't take it. It was just such a funny deal. So I went back in 2004 and did it again. And, uh, you know, revamped my approach. I went in and I shook every person's hand that worked for that team that was, you know, doing this job fair. Uh, I ended up sharing an elevator ride with a guy who was the, the, one of the vice presidents of the company at that time. There had been kind of a management change. Uh, when I got in the elevator, he, was, he had mud up to his armpits. He was wearing a pair of je blue jeans and a T-shirt, and he was muddy as all heck. And I looked at him, and I went, man, who is this guy, you know? You can't get a job looking like that. And I uh, reached my hand out and shook his hand and ended up being one of the vice presidents. So I got off to a good start. You never know. You just never know. He was out fixing a pipe or something. It's really uh, one of the things I learned early about our business is you sort of wear a lot of hats and do a lot and if, of do a little bit of everything in minor league baseball. So uh, 
you know, long story short, I got the job. I got an internship in the box office, unpaid, and uh, got my start in minor league baseball. And the rest is history. Now the general manager of the Fresno Grizzlies. You're joining us here at 1680 AM, the business leader. Every week, Tuesday at 9 AM, it's the business leader with Lance Cardoza. And I'm excited to have Derek Franks. When we come back from this break, we're going to talk to Derek Franks and talk more about the Fresno Grizzlies. Oh, did, uh, we're not wrapped up. Hey, this is what's awesome about live radio. <laughs> we're counting down still. We're not wrapped up in the first segment, but Derek Franks started as an intern. You had many, uh, many years now through the business. You got the position, the general manager. We're going to talk when we come back from the break. We'll talk about how you became the general manager. How did that, how did that happen? Because that was a long road. You worked very hard for it. And we're going to talk about Fresno Grizzlies, the Houston Astros affiliate, And we're going to talk about how that process works also when we return here at 1680 AM Business Leaders. Join us every Tuesday morning at 9 AM where I'll bring you different business leaders each and every week right here on The Answer, 1680 AM Business Leaders. I'm Lance Cardoza. We'll be right back with Derek Franks, Fresno Grizzlies. Giving you the inside story of business leaders in the Valley and beyond. This is Business Leaders with Lance Cardoza. Welcome back to Business Leaders here on 1680 AM. The answer every Tuesday morning at 9 AM. Lance Cardoza, yours truly right here. We'll be bringing you the business leaders this week. And business leaders, I have my good friend, the general manager of the Fresno Grizzlies. And they are the minor league affiliate of the Houston Astros. And in 2015, when the Astros came to town, the Fresno Grizzlies became the national champions. We're going to talk a little bit about that. We'll talk about Chichancy Park and how it all works with the Fresno Grizzlies. But first, Derek, we talked about how you started. Avenel, you grew up. You, you were born in Avenel grew up in Kingsburg you went in as a got an intern position and worked your way up to general manager what was that process like I mean you had a dream you wanted to be in sports and you're in it yeah it was great you know I I got the call finally from uh, I got the interview with the the guy who was I met one of the vice presidents in the elevator then I got the interview with another the other vice president of ticket sales uh, Andrew Stubner and uh, I really got lucky because they sort of cattle call you. They put you in a line, you know, of people. They they send you to. I got sent to table seven, and and it happened to be, you know, uh, an important person who ended up playing a big role in my career that I got to interview with as a kid. And uh, Andrew called. He waited like two weeks to call me, and I was going nuts because I hadn't got me. I hadn't got the job here the four the year before. And uh, he finally called me, and he said, "Hey, I I knew." And it was it was such a relief to get that phone call. I'll never forget it. Um, he called and he said, Hey, I, I knew from the second I met you that I was going to offer you this position. I'd just been so busy. And I went, Oh gosh, you got to tell me that day. That would have been yeah, nice. Would have been nice. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, he said, Hey, I want you to do an internship in the box office. It's the same start that I got, uh, when I started my career, it'll be a great start for you. It's the last, you know, internship position I have. It'll help you get more experience than just coming in and working game days. And I said, all right, great. And he said, the catch is, you know, there's no pay. Oh, okay. No, okay. That, that's all right. That's all right. So, uh, and he said, we'll get you some hours. You can work some game nights too, but why don't you do this internship? So I came out and I started in the, in the ticket office and, uh, you know, my first day on the job, the, uh, back then we used to print ticket books. So oh, if yeah. you bought season tickets, we do them different now. We print the, each ticket on nice stock and do some yeah, kind of book, custom. You had to staple it, probably but, put it all together. Yeah, but back oh, yeah. then we ordered the books and we had a deadline for when you had to put, you know, if you hadn't paid by a certain time, uh, we still ordered the books and we just you know, ordered them. So you had this room. I walked in and they said, I walked in the afternoon after class and they said, introduced me to a couple guys. And my boss was this, you know, big, tall, intimidating looking guy. And he said, uh, uh, his name is Victor Phelan. Actually, Victor's still around here in Fresno. Victor said, Hey, intern, uh, I need you to stack all these books because every time you'd sell a season ticket, you'd have to go in and you'd dig through. They were all organized by section oh, row and seat. And you'd they needle rep, in the haystack. Needle yeah. in the haystack. The reps would come through and they'd <laughs> rip the 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 uh, stacks of books to shreds, not put it back together. And so, you know, my job was to put them all back together. So I did that, and uh, you know, it got anyway beyond that was my first day. It was kind of funny just or, reorganize these books. Yeah. And I sat there and did that all afternoon. This you know. You couldn't hardly see over these stacks of season ticket books. And uh, you wanted to be in the sports business. <laughs> <So that laughs> yeah. was you want to be in and stack the books. Stack man, the kid. books, kid. So, uh, so we did that. Anyway, I came back and, you know, got the, I feel like on the, in the ticket office, you get to, you know, tickets is the bread and butter and it's the bloodline of any sports organization. And uh, butts and seats is the name of the game. It's any, any organization's uh, top revenue stream is going to be ticket revenue. And, uh, you know, 
I got to learn a lot about the industry being on the front line there, right? You know, dealing with the customers on the front line at the windows and, and, uh, you know, being involved in ticketing, which is the biggest and most yeah. important thing in any sports organization. So I got to learn a lot really fast. And the nice thing, uh, about the internship is, you know, I got to do a lot, a lot of things. I, I, I was the mascot. I got to go on community appearances, you know? So, um, you know, they, they, you were game they, they for kind of make anything. you do, they yeah. make you do anything. And I was, I was game for it. You yeah. Game. You I wanted, wanted to learn. You were hungry. Yeah. Yeah. So I took full opportunity of that I got through my first year and, uh, my, my next, one of my next mentors in my, you know, path with the Grizzlies, is a guy named Ash Anions and he ran a, uh, inside sales department and he came to me late in August or so toward the end of the season as it was winding down. And he said, Hey, you want to come back next year? And I said, yeah, at that point I decided I was going to transfer Fresno state and stay. I was in love with it. And I thought I could, I could, I could do something here and get more experience and, and stay home, which, um, and a it, lot of the positions are just seasonal, correct? Yeah. And, so, and this was just too. for the season. Yeah. yeah. The internship was a, a seasonal position. So he said, Hey, you want to stay? Uh, I want you to come work for my department. He had a, we still have this department today, an inside sales department, guys who do sort of phone bank, calling to sell many plans and groups and season tickets and whatnot to businesses to uh, single game buyers stuff like that and uh i did not want to get into sales in fact i had declared at fresno state i was going to go into uh, pr and i went i had no desire to do sales i'd never done it um and i was nervous about it <clears throat> so he said well if you want to stick around in this business you need to learn how to sell something every every position has some element of sales in it and it's the fastest way for you to to get to move up and uh, stay in this business. So I did. <clears throat> I went in and uh, did did an inside sales job with them. Uh, they hire you in you know groups of eight to ten people, and you train for a couple of weeks, and you read the script, and you learn all the you know objections that you're going to hear, and uh, all the selling points and all that stuff. You create your script, and and you go. And uh, out of my hiring group, now in my story, my buddy, the one who didn't get hired, or who, yeah, the one so. who got hired and and didn't accept the job. He comes back and he he comes in and works in the sales department. As After well all that, with the me. lack of passion, yeah, <laughs> he, comes back. he loved baseball, man. But he was oh, he, ready. he wanted to try it again, you know. So he came in and worked with me. So we were in a group of like probably eight people that started together, and you get on the phones all at the same time. And you get going, and uh, you know you don't want to be the last person in your group to make a sale. And uh, I was the last person in my group to make the sale. So uh, including my buddy who had you know had quit the job. Uh, or didn't take the job, and then he quit this job before I made my first sale. So did a light of fire into you? Oh, I was fired up, man, and and uh, I stunk at it though. I came home every day. I remember my my first week on the phone. I was making phone calls. I'm uncomfortable. I'm not very good at it. And my boss was standing behind me waiting, and I was just bombing horribly. And they give you leads that are like far away, like Merced. People aren't yeah. really going to buy, you yeah. know, that much because they're further away. That's an hour. So you away, can yeah. kind of choke and and not do as well and and learn. And so I'm calling like Merced, Merced or Modesto or I mean someone that wouldn't come to a game and just kind of getting my my bearings. And I remember my boss sitting behind me and I hung up the phone one day and he goes, uh, I, I, on that call, the person said, are you reading off of a script? And I just froze up and froze went, oh, uh, no. And they hung up on me and I went, oh, put my head down. And my boss stood behind me and he said, he just lit me up, you know, come on, man. You know, and so yeah. I was just, it was just a high pressure thing. So anyway. It took me almost four weeks to make my first sale. It was the last one in my group, and I'd already worked there, so it was pressure. Like, hey, Frank's, hey, Frank's, yeah, Frank's is doing sales now. And all the first time people who never worked there made a sale before me. Uh, got my first sale, of course, then got the hang of it, got better at it. But man, I thought about quitting every day for the first four weeks. Every day, I thought about quitting. Man, I'll just do something else. This I'll is find good. another team. Maybe I got another job I can do. And, uh, you know, worked through it and uh, did that for two years and finished get, getting my degree. And at that point, then uh, got a chance. There was my my boss Ash had left the organization, and uh, another guy had left. So I got us through the season by helping kind of bridge the gap between those two positions, and kind of covered both. And uh, finished school, and my boss said, "Hey, you can have one job or the other." I ran the sales department, and and uh, just kind of moved up on the sales side and kept getting experience. And then the opportunity started to open up for you, and you stepped in as a general manager yeah, of the Fresno yeah. Grizzlies. Yeah, at that point, you know, you just you start to learn the marketing, start to learn the operations side, and uh, I stuck with it. And every time that I thought that there was another opportunity that I was going to take to leave and do something else in, uh, in Major League Baseball with other minor league teams, I looked around. Everybody looks around. Uh, every time I was about to do that, Something happened and kept me here, and, and now you, I'm and here you weren't today. afraid. You weren't afraid, and I think that second time when you came back to get that position as an intern, you stuck your hand out, you shook everybody's hand, you got to know everybody. You never know who the decision maker is, and uh, we're 
or you, you were passionate about it. You took whatever they had at the time. You're listening to 1680 AM, the business leaders. I'm Lance Cardoza here with the general manager of the Fresno Grizzlies here on Business Leaders. When we come back, more with Derek Franks right here on Business Leaders, Tuesday mornings at 9 a.m. You are listening to Business Leaders with Lance Cardoza, the behind-the-scenes story of the business shakers and movers in the Valley and beyond. Once again, here's Lance Cardoza. Hello, everybody. Thank you for listening to Business Leaders. Every Tuesday morning, join me here at 9 a.m. on 1680 a.m. I'm here with the general manager of the Fresno Grizzlies, Derek Franks. And Derek has talked about starting with the Fresno Grizzlies as an intern, not being afraid, getting out there and getting fired up. And failure is a big part of your success as a general manager of the Fresno Grizzlies. And a lot of people, and you talk to some of the most biggest hitters in business today, have all had miserable failures. There was something they tripped up on or I'm not going to get into sales and then find out they're pretty good at sales. Uh, and you had part of that story. And uh, let's let's talk a little bit more about that. Fresno Grizzlies General Manager Derek Franks, thank you for being on this program. Oh, it's great. I'm enjoying it, Lance. And, uh, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, I think those failures that you have along the way are, are real character builders. And, and I tell every, you know, every, I get a chance now to, I had a lot of people in my career that have taken time to invest in me that they didn't have to. They saw something. And, uh, and I mentioned some of those names today. And I've had a lot of others in in you know the years uh, since then but uh you know i always tell people you, know, you got to take those failures and and turn them into something and they're character builders so uh, i was i get a chance i love to get a chance to talk to these young kids that want to work in sports and uh i as busy as we get i i love when i get you know a, an email or a call from a kid who's doing a, a sports management project or needs to do an interview or something or just wants advice and i was telling them, you know you got to take your lumps in this business you know they to get into sports it's still like that there's so few jobs and it's a passion job right i mean you're passionate about we, it yeah we don't and in our industry just as a whole in sports we don't pay as much it, you, you get paid a little less to work in sports because the the talent pool is pretty deep it's fun everybody it's a likes long, it's a long road to get it, to those positions it is. to work for those major league companies right. that do pay well so it's traditionally we ask people to pay their dues do internships work part-time do do the things that i was fortunate enough to to just sort of fall into and do and uh, given that advice, just got to take your lumps and pay your dues. So, uh, but there's a lot of, you know, embarrassment and failure along the way. And, uh, you know, the, the ones who succeed can learn from it, dust themselves off and, and get motivated by it. And it motivated you to keep climbing in the business of sports, minor league baseball with the Fresno Grizzlies. And you were the vice president of sales. And then uh, how, did, how did that day come around? It was, it was a long time in the making that you were sort of being groomed and being looked at as the general manager of the Grizzlies. So how was that process, and what was it like for you personally? Because, man, you came in as an intern. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you came in as an intern, and you became the general manager of one of the most popular minor league teams in all minor league baseball, the Fresno Grizzlies, with that alter ego marketing brand of the Fresno Tacos, which is worldwide. What was it like? Yeah, the uh, you know, when you when you first just kind of get to that point. In 2011, we had a uh, ownership made some management changes in our organization, and uh, they it was – you know, you go through, I've been there 14 years, man. You got some really high highs and some low lows. And, and during that time, we, you know, coming off the recession and a housing market crash in 09 was one of the, I mean, we had, we had come off a 2008 year, which was one of the, the best in all categories and groups, uh, attendance. I mean, revenues, we had, we had really right in the high. We had the, the Giants played an exhibition game with us that season. I mean, we just had an incredible year, broke a bunch of records. And then a steep fall off in 2009 with what happened with the economy, and 2010 followed. Not much improvement there. Uh, some changes in in our management team and uh, some turbulence. And during that time, <clears throat> you know, a lot all of us were really tested. It was you know there was a lot of uh, uh, a lot of shake up and a lot. Yeah, I like a lot how you branded on. as turbulence. It's <laughs> just some turbulence. Yeah, yeah, A lot of businesses deal with the turbulence. You're right, it's right. A little shaky. And uh, at that time, you know, I'd been there a long time at that point, and I had a really chance at that point to get involved in more than what I was just, what I was doing just in sales. And, uh, um, you know, that we, we kind of, we needed people to step up and I was ready to step up at that time. It was one of the busiest years of my life. And, um, but it was, you know, and at that point, uh, our owner, Chris Cummings, we, I went to the uh, all-star game that year in Salt Lake city for the first time. I had never done any of like the league travel stuff like my bosses had done. And on that trip, we, uh, 
we I remember him telling me, he said, the reason I brought you on this trip is you need to start learning about the league, not just our business in Fresno, but you need to start learning about how the league, how the teams are partners together in the Pacific Coast League, league issues, and, and having access to these other GMs And how it and all owners, works. How it all works. How, yeah. the, the, a, how do you create connections a, amongst each other right. and how does it work? Yeah, exactly. And uh, I remember I, um, I, I signed something. I paid for something and signed my signature, and he said, well, your signature's so uh, so bad, you can easily be a general manager. And I, I laughed, and he said, you know, I want you to be our general manager, but I need you to learn more about the league and what goes on outside of Fresno. So we started we started at that point. It was kind of the, the pseudo-GM or GM in training for a couple of years, and in 2014 became the executive vice president, and then we added the general manager title in 2015 as we were going into a new affiliation. So, um, you know, the long process. And again, I had gone into, uh, you know, I picked PR as my uh, my study in school, yeah. and that was what my my dad's buddy Rick Moxley did. And I got to work, you know, Betsy Hayes and Jan Edwards at Fresno State. I loved it. I mean, I had the was, great people, I had great, great people, oh, great. And I came out and I went, man. At this point, once you start getting beyond just selling tickets and sponsorships, and you start getting into the greater, uh, I really got a chance to use my my PR degree, and my background a little bit there, and I really enjoyed that. And and during that time, uh, you know, we we really started trying to reshape the you know, the image of the team. And of course, then that takes us into, you know, where we are today with an affiliate change and all that stuff that was, that was looming at, without yeah. me knowing. You came uh, in a in real hot years. time of a change for the Grizzlies. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I really felt like, Hey, I got my, you know, got, got my experience doing internship and got to do a lot of different jobs, got the sales experience that I needed. And, uh, and then really, as we moved forward into 2014 when we started talking about some serious change for our company and having to be ready for it. Uh, you know, I really was thankful for that. My PR, uh, the, the lessons I'd learned at Fresno state uh, for, for where we got to and communication yeah. right, is so important in, in, in it's, everything it's that we do. It's king in every business. Communication is king and you have to be a good communicator. And at your level as a general manager, you answer to everybody and everybody answers to you. So the process of communications is it's very important because you have a team with a major league baseball organization that you got to make sure they're happy. You have a safe playing field, offering that opportunity to be in your house with the Fresno Grizzlies and a big staff to be able to operate a minor league game. So 2015, when we come back from the break here shortly, let's talk about that year, 2015. You're the general manager the lifelong dream of being in sports now you're the gm of the fresno grizzlies they come in with a new affiliation a big turnaround change up for the grizzlies and then you become the 2015 national champions i don't know if everybody knows that in the valley but the fresno grizzlies right here in fresno were the national champions the best minor league team in all minor league baseball so that year i will just give a little taste it was just what was that like when we come back uh, you mean, oh, the, one preview, the preview is champagne showers champagne showers <laughs> so when we come back for the break we're going to talk about that the 2015 national champions fresno grizzlies he's wearing that big ring right there and uh we'll talk a little more about that with Derek franks you are listening to business leaders with lance cardoza the behind the scenes story of the business shakers and movers in the valley and beyond once again here's lance cardoza all right, all right. We're back with the general manager of the Fresno Grizzlies, Derek Franks. We heard you rise to that position of general manager, and it's only begun. It's only begun, and there's a lot of big stuff around the corner for the Fresno Grizzlies. But before the break, we were talking about in 2015, 2014 was the affiliation change, and in 15, Grizzlies became the national champions. That was a big, big night. And you mentioned champagne before we went on the break. Champagne showers. Uh, talk about it. What was that like, becoming national champions? Yeah, being national champions is is amazing. Of course, in our, in, in our role, I get asked this all the time. You know, as gen, When you hear general manager, you think of the guy at the big league level that makes the trades and signs players. I'm, I just get to run the business, and our team gets to run this business and, and put people in the ballpark and – uh, that get to come and see the Astros, uh, you know, develop players in our ballpark. And, uh, but, uh, man, so you don't have much control over the game. We, we handle the, the team travel and we make sure they have the baseball amenities they need and, and, you know, laundry's done, food's cooked. I mean, a lot of elements that just make sure that the players have everything they need. And, uh, so you don't have a lot to do with it, but man, when you get into that playoff atmosphere, everybody's a part of it and it feels just, it's just unbelievable ride. And for us, uh, our team hadn't made the playoffs since 1998. The very first year the Grizzlies played at Biden Field, they made the playoffs. They got 
beat in the first round, if I remember right, and uh, had not even made the playoffs since 98. Then we not only make the playoffs, but we go all the way. It was I, I, I was talking about it just yesterday. Honestly, it, uh, it, it is the, the two-week run of, of being in the playoffs and winning the national championship is the most unbelievable, unforgettable two weeks of my career. Um uh, you know, not as much, a lot of business in there too, but man, it was just a lot of fun too. Uh, and, and so much heart, uh, heartburn and st- we, all of our games came down to the wire and except for the championship game, thank God. But, uh, it was just the most unbelievable thing ever. And, and, you know, you see the champagne showers on TV when, you know, the, in the playoffs, that's one of the big things, uh, you know, had, got, got the chance to be a part of three of those, you know, each time yeah. you clinch or win along the way. Um, you know, our team included, you know, our owner and myself and some of the staff in that. Uh, it's just an unbelievable ride that I'll never forget. And that group of people, it was a real special team. I think we all have that bond. And what's amazing about that, you, I'm sure, were not expecting that 2014, 2015. And I mentioned I have a, a intimate uh, relationship with the Grizzlies, very close uh, working with you, Derek. And as a media consultant, and that's what we do with Business Street Media Group and working closely with you, uh, when the affiliation came and it changed, we were excited because Astros had a powerful farm team and maybe we're going to see some winning games and that was exciting for Fresno. But we had no idea that through that change in that process, it was a big challenge and, and being able to brand and go back to what we originally were, which is the Fresno Grizzlies and take that brand and control Growlifornia and all these cool promotions and events that the marketing team with the Fresno Grizzlies is so good at creating this great family entertainment baseball entertainment uh but we had no idea that that first year was going to be that big so it was powerful i think like you said for the team but we all got involved we all got involved and got so excited about it and we're excited about this year too and that's why i wanted to have you as my first guest here on business leaders uh talk about how the affiliation how does that work a lot of people out there i know but a lot of people out there don't really know they hear about the looming possible new ownership of the fresno grizzlies right. which is great you've been working on a long time but that and a little bit of uh how does that all work yeah so the the ownership of the club and the relationship with your big league team your affiliation with your big league team are two separate things and that's one thing that gets confused very easily and rightfully so if you're not in the business or you haven't been explained to it's it's uh it can be confusing um so two separate things so you know you have a group that owns every club this is true for every club minor league baseball you have an ownership group in some cases the big league clubs do own the minor league clubs we're not in that situation we have a like the dodgers yeah the dodgers a group that, the uh, dodgers group yeah exactly and uh and there's many others you see a lot of those the astros our affiliate owns their double a uh corpus christi they own that team and they own one in Greenville and uh, a, a, a new one in Fayetteville, uh, Fayetteville, North Carolina as well. So you see that. Our group has a, uh, has had two ownership groups. Uh, John and Diane Carberry had the Diamond Group, and then Chris Cummings has a group that he put together uh, that you know has owned it since uh, – it owns it currently. Yeah. And so your ownership group owns the franchise, and when you own that franchise, you have the right to a player development contract, which is an affiliation with a major league team. Those contracts – you know, minor league and major league baseball have the whole arrangement between minor and major leagues. All it's all collectively bargained and is part of a, a big uh, a big contract, and uh, that runs for many more years. And all of the the player development contract that you that the franchise has the right to have with one my uh, one major league team. It's all all the terms are laid out in the bylaws of our leagues and our partnership with major league baseball. So when we talk about affiliations, all the rules are really set. The ownership group of, of the Grizzlies and all these other teams out there are allowed to go out and they get the, – you're guaranteed when you own that Pacific Coast League franchise to get one team. So um, – uh, and the like I said, the terms of that are all laid out in the bylaws. So we are allowed to sign two-year agreements or four-year agreements. Those are the terms. And the way that the league has it set up is they all – come up every even year so that you have the ability to have some uh you know free agent season and you have the ability for there to be change and so every even year the two or four year contracts come up and uh you know outside of the teams that own their affiliates those teams those those teams are locked in you know yeah um so it's not uncommon for a minor league club to switch affiliates yeah it can can really conceivably you could have a situation where a team changes every two years yeah. Because, again, the league lets you sign two or four years, and all the contracts come up at the same time. 
And so, uh, you know, we signed a two-year agreement in 15 with the Astros that we selected them for the reasons you mentioned, great farm team. And Reed Ryan is a friend of ours and been in our league. Uh, and we re-signed another two-year agreement with them going into this season. So we're with the Astros for 2017 and 2018 season. And then, of course, we'll go up and try to sign another two-year deal with them at that point. The ownership of the team, if it does change here soon, which we hope it will, it won't change that. They they inherit our PDC with the Astros, and we fulfill which is, it. Which is good through 2018. 2018, right. Okay. Right. Yeah. So those two things, ownership and affiliations, um, are oftentimes two separate things. They're confused. People say uh, possible new owners. It was seven zero vote with the city council. They approved the deal for it to move forward. What does this mean with the Fresno Grizzlies? Uh, now is Houston leaving us? What are they gone? You know, and there was a story two days before the vote. And the, you know, it's like people get confused with it, and I'm yeah, sure you yeah. deal with that often. Yeah, and every, you know, people like to play the, you know, who's going to be with who game, and I understand the, the int- intrigue in that. Um, you know, from our perspective. We, we've got a deal that runs through 2018, and if we change ownership here before the end of the year, we continue, and they accept that contract with the Astros, and then we we go into 2018, and, and rather go into 2019, and we either try to re, and we try to re up with our with the Astros, which is what our intention will be. We're here with the general manager Derek Franks, and we'll be right back with a close of business leaders. You can listen to us here at AM 1680 every Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. I'm Lance Cardoza. We'll be back wrapping up here with Derek Franks with the Fresno Grizzlies. Giving you the inside story of business leaders in the Valley and beyond. This is Business Leaders with Lance Cardoza. Hello, everybody. We're back with the general manager of the Fresno Grizzlies. You're listening to Business Leaders. And I'm excited every Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. to bring you business leaders throughout the Valley and beyond. And, Derek, we were talking about Houston Astros as an affiliate. We had that great year, 2015, become national champions. Great ball being played down at Chichancy Park. It's a beautiful park if you've never been down there. But uh, it, you became the Grizzlies again when there was an affiliation change. You, you came back. You had that attitude of Growlifornia. You know, the team went up to Sacramento that we had before. <laughs> And you became California, not California. And we fly those flags everywhere. Right. Talk to me about that. Becoming the Grizzlies again and being real strong with that. Yeah, you know, the, the affiliation changed from from Giants to Astros. I mean, we had a lot of questions about that in this market. Heavy Giants fans. We'd been with them for 17 years. We just won three out of five uh, World Series championships. Most of our brand at that point was really wrapped up in the Giants and the successes they were having because we had so many players that went up there and, and achieved that. And that was, that was great. I mean, great memories and great. But when we got back, when we changed affiliates, people asked, well, what are you going to do now? Who are the Astros? They're not in California. They play in the American League. Who are these guys? And uh, there's not there's not a fan base here for the Houston Astros. I mean, there's just there's just really yeah. not. So it, uh, there is though some. I do see it at the ballpark, but not like yeah, I mean, we do with the Giants. I mean, yeah. they were in grilled and now. There. I mean, now today, guys, people have connection to these players, and they've, yeah. the fan base has grown a little bit. But uh, you know, at that point, people were asking, and, and we were true. We looked truthful. We looked them right in the eye, and I said, "Look, we're going to be Fresno's team. This affiliation could really, like I mentioned earlier, it could change every two years. And I know teams that are like that that change often." And uh, at the end of the day, this franchise was brought to Fresno because Fresno, the Carberries believe this is a, a, a market that should be one of 30 that gets AAA baseball, the highest level of minor league ball in the country, puts us in an elite uh, class of cities that get AAA baseball. It's a great community thing. So uh, we got to really focus on that again. And that's what brought us to today with California, with the Fresno tacos. I mean, that's that stuff is so... Uh, so Central Valley and so Fresno, and that's that's really what it's all about. And the big taco truck throwdown is coming up. It's two days this year. On the 28th, you get taco truck throwdown, a baseball game, followed by a taco fest. Everything down on the ballpark. People are excited about this, right? Yeah, this is year seven. We're going to two-day event, baseball game day one. Uh, longer, more of an all-day festival day two. It's going to be the best ever. It's Gralifornia. It's the Fresno Grizzlies general manager, Derek Franks. Thank you for being on Business Leaders, the inaugural, the first show. Appreciate that. Next week, Tuesday at 9 a.m., listen to Business Leaders. I'm Lance Cardoza.